By the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to navigate between the different routes in an Angular application. Now, in this lecture, we're going to carry on with the example application that we started in the previous lecture on route configuration. All I've done in my editor is that I'm collapsing chunks of code so we can just focus on the bits of code that we're interested in. Now, one way we can implement navigation is simply to hard code the URLs in the href anchor attributes on our navigation header. So we have the home link here and the search link here. I could simply add the slash hash slash URL to the home link and the search URL to the search link. And if we then refresh the application, I then click on search, I'm navigated to search, I then click on home and I'm navigated to home. That's one way in which we could implement routing in an Angular application, but we can also implement routing by programmatically navigating to different URLs via an instance of a router. Now to use router, we need to import it into our imports. So if I scroll to the top, so we need to make sure it's imported and it comes from the Angular router module. Now it's something that we inject onto a component, but we don't need to provide it on our ng module. The router module itself automatically makes the router service injectable by the DI framework. So to use it in our header component, I'm going to inject it via the constructor, like so. And then to navigate using it, I just call the navigate function on our router and I pass to it something called a link params array, which I'll go through in a second. So now I've created two functions, one called go home and go search. I can replace our href attributes on our anchor tags with click handlers instead. So now when someone clicks on the main iTunes name, we call go home. If someone clicks on home, we call go home. And if someone clicks on search, we call go search. So now if I refresh our application, and then click on search, and we get navigated to search, I click on home, and we get navigated to home. Now the value, the array we pass into the navigate function might look a bit strange. We call it a link params array and it's equivalent to the URL split by the forward slash character into an array. And just an important note, we just, we don't have to pass in the slash and the hash. Depending on the routing strategy that we're using, Angular will automatically prepend it with whatever it needs to be prepended with. So we just need to add the paths as they appear in our routes, like so. So we can demonstrate a more complex link params array by changing our search route from having just a path of search to a path of search slash foo slash moo. And then in to pass to our navigate function, we have a link params array with three items, search, foo, and moo. So now if I refresh our application, I then navigate to search, you can hopefully see that the URL is search slash foo slash moo. So navigating via a link params array and specifically with a router has one big advantage over just hard coding the URL in anchor tags. And that is that parts of the URL can be variables. So 
So now as the second parameter, the second index of our link params array, I'm actually just passing in a variable, a variable which holds foo. But our application still works just the same as before. And this becomes a lot more useful when we start dealing with parameterized routes later on in this section. As well as navigating programmatically via a router, we can also control navigation by using a router link directive in the template itself. So the router link directive takes as input the same link params array format that we've used previously in the router.navigate function. And actually, let me also change the path here back to what we were using before. And now, let me go home. Just let me refresh. So now if I navigate to search, I get shown the search component again, and again, home shows me the home component. So an important feature of any navigation component is giving the user some feedback about which menu item they are currently viewing. And another way to describe this is giving the user some feedback about which route is currently active. Now with the Twitter bootstrap navigation styles, we can give some, them some feedback by adding a class of active to the parent element to our anchor tag. So if we go back into the header component, on the home anchor tag, on the parent to the home anchor tag, I'm going to add a class of active. And now if I refresh our page, hopefully you can see that the home menu item is a darker color than the search menu item. And again, if I move that active class to search, then refresh the page, you can see that the search menu item now has a darker color. So that's what we want to achieve. So we want to add and remove the active class to the appropriate li tag, depending on which route is currently active. So to help in adding and removing these classes, Angular has another directive called the router link active directive. So a router link active directive is associated with a route through a router link directive. And it takes as input an array of classes, which it will add to the element it's attached to if its root is currently active. So this will add a class of active to the anchor tag if the current root matches the home root. But this isn't so useful for us in Twitter Bootstrap since we need to add the active class to the parent element. But that's fine, the router link active directive can be set on a parent element, a parent of the router link directive, and it will still associate itself with the root. So we can just take our router link active, add it to the parent element. If it sees that underneath it, there is a router link directive, this router link active directive will know that it should associate itself with this root. So let me add this also to the search link below. And now when I refresh the page, you can see that the home menu item has a slightly darker color. It has the active class. That's because we're currently in the home route and the router link active directive has noticed that and added the active class to the li element. So now if we click on search, we can now see that the search menu item has the darker color. And that's because active has now been added to the search class as well. In fact, it removed the active class because I had all accidentally added that there before. So in summary, in this lecture, I've shown you how we can navigate between routes in Angular programmatically via the router and via the template by using a router link directive. 
And I've also explained that both of these methods require a link params array to be passed in in order to function. And finally, I've shown you how to add some user feedback as to the currently active route by adding the router link active directive. And in the next lecture, I'm going to explain how to add variable parameters to routes via parameterized routes.